Thị trường Logistics toàn cầu được dự báo có mức tăng trưởng trung bình là 6,54% một năm trong giai đoạn năm 2017-2020 và đạt 15,5 nghìn tỷ đô la Mỹ vào năm 2024. Theo ước tính, hiện có hơn 4 nghìn tỷ đô la Mỹ hàng hóa được vận chuyển trên toàn thế giới mỗi năm, cho nên chi phí quản lý, theo dõi hàng hóa vận chuyển chiếm một khoảng không nhỏ trên tổng giá trị hàng hóa trên. Công nghệ blockchain được xem là biểu tượng của cuộc cách mạng công nghiệp 4.0. Các nước trên thế giới đang tìm cách ứng dụng công nghệ này với hy vọng làm thay đổi toàn bộ việc vận chuyển hàng hóa toàn cầu, giảm bớt gánh nặng về chi phí, tăng tối đa lợi nhuận cho dịch vụ logistics. Hello and welcome to Smart Money on FBNC. Now, traditionally, supply chains have relied heavily on physical movement of large volumes of paper documents, so leaving the windows open for fraud, human error, and inadvertent delays. And nowadays, a growing number of, uh, of companies believe that uh, blockchain technology could uh, help solve the issues and could help speed up trades. So in order to have a further understanding on the benefit and the challenges of blockchain, application in trades. We are now going to have a discussion with Professor Jason Potts, who is the director of the Blockchain Innovation Hub from RMIT University, and he is also from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Potts, to the program today. How are you today? Fantastic. Really glad to be here. Well, uh, and thank you for joining in our program today. Now, um, first of all, could you tell us how is the blockchain application is applied in trades? How does it work? Yeah, so blockchain is a new um, infrastructural technology that is going to revolutionize how supply chains work. Mm -hmm. Because what a supply chain is, is not just moving goods and services um, from point to point and, and, and along, along a, a track. Yeah. It's also moving the information with it. Mm -hmm. This information relates to provenance, um, bills of lading, trade finance. And what blockchain enables you to do is to put all of that information on a blockchain and dramatically lower the cost of moving the information and therefore the cost of trade. So we see this as a radical new infrastructure to lower the cost of global trade. And, uh, but what is the uh, main difference between trades without blockchain technology? I mean, traditionally, uh, like you say, it could speed, uh, speed up trades and because the flow of the information is going to be faster, how does it really, really work? Because uh, we, we, we want to know in details. Yeah. So, I mean, um, when, when we move a, a good or service from, say, Vietnam to Australia, um, the, the good, every time it moves, every time it, it, it comes on and off a ship or on and off a truck or into a warehouse, um, information, you often in the form of paper, has to be cited and signed and cleared and, and, and so on. That information relates to where it came from, its permission to be here, its biosecurity and so on. Um, that, you know, if, if, if there's 30 different steps between that thing, there'll be at least 300 bits of paper that have to be signed and verified. That's the cost of trade. Um, and it's moving that sort of stuff to blockchain um, that that's, will significantly digitize and speed up the way that supply chains work. Well, um, so first of all, it would uh, speed up the the uh, procedure and the, the time of the flow of the information. Secondly, it would reduce cost hugely. And besides that, um, what, what are the other benefits that blockchain technology could could bring to um, trades? So reducing cost and, and, and increasing speed are two significant things. Yes. Um, but what it also does, because you've done that, mm -hmm. is it means you can actually put more information onto, the, onto, onto supply chains. This is information about the provenance of a good. Um, we can actually have a lot, we can have p photographs of the p person that made it along the way. We can add a lot more information, which is valuable. Yeah. Um, that increases the value of the product as it goes through. Um, we also get more security because this information um, using blockchain technology is a lot harder to tamper with and to, and to, to forge and, and to fake. Um, we can trust in that information more, which means there's more information, we trust it more, there's greater security in it, and we get the benefits of speed and price. Uh, but that is in regards of uh, information, but uh, uh, could it help uh, in limiting the, the trade of uh, counterfeits, the fake goods, and also the stop um, illegal smuggling? Yeah. Can, can, can it do that? Look, I mean, this, 
It's, it's highly likely that it will. And the reason it will is just it, it raises the cost of doing that because it's much easier to verify whether something, if you can more easily verify the origin and provenance of something and verify each different step along the way, it becomes much harder to tamper with that mm -hmm. um, and to sort of insert things into it. So a lot of the you know estimates put it between sort of Blockchain technology makes it more secure, which means it's, it's more costly to do that or easier to verify and catch. So I expect this will be very, very good for, um, for driving a lot of counterfeit goods out of supply chains. Uh, and uh, uh, because right now, how companies are applying it? Uh, is there in, in many other countries? Because I know that blockchain technology has been applied uh, to, into many um, industries, especially in bankings. But how about trading systems? Yeah, so we're very at the very early days of this. So um, with, with, with cryptocurrencies and banking, we've seen money um, on blockchains for 10 years now. Um, it's only really in the past two or three years okay. that we've started to see experiments to, to, to move um, supply chains onto blockchains. Um, there was a, a big announcement was made earlier, in, in, earlier this year in, in January um, by IBM, Maersk and Walmart to form a consortium to try and move um, a lot of their supply chains on that space. Um, this year, 2018, we've seen a lot of startups, um, a lot of proof of concept, a lot of experiments. Um, but um, so I think we're, we're, still at the, we're still at early days in the development of this, but we're starting to see it across agricultural supply chains, um, the movement of, of fish and perishable goods. Um, so what we're observing now is um, through 2018, we've started to see experiments, proof of concepts done by big companies like IBM and Maersk and, and Walmart. We've started to see small companies experiment with developing and proving that the technology works along agricultural supply chains, horticultural goods and services, um, um, fish and, and other perishable goods. And so we're, we're seeing that this technology can work. Um, what we haven't sort of seen yet is the full end-to-end consumer application yet, but I think that will be coming soon. Okay, uh, thank you very much and we'll be talking more about the challenges of blockchain application um, and especially in logistics. Thank you very much. We have been talking with Professor Jason Potts from um, RMIT University about the blockchain technology in trading system and we'll be talking more about the challenges of this application um, in logistics in the next part. Please stay with us.